If we look carefully, we'll see many doctrinal ideas repeated, perhaps in slightly different ways, in Paul's epistles. However, each letter is a different diagnostic tool to be used by wise workmen in the Lord's service. What special helps do we find in the letters to Thessalonica? Remember the story of the apostles' work here, told in Acts 17. For three Sabbaths, Paul reasoned from the scriptures with the local Jews. A large number of devout Greeks and quite a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. But we read, the Jews who were not persuaded became envious. Linking up with some ne'er-do-wells hanging around the market, they set the whole city in an uproar. They were looking for Paul and Silas, but unable to locate them, they took some of the local believers and hurled these accusations at them before the city council. These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. It wasn't true. The world is already upside down because of sin. The gospel turns men right side up. Paul and Silas needed to take the persecution away from these new believers, so headed at night to Berea. But here's the point. When you read the epistles, Paul wrote back to the fledgling saints in Thessalonica. Watch for statements like these. You yourselves know, brethren, so we don't need to say anything. Paul uses the phrase, as you know, four times, as well as, for you remember, brethren, we told you before when we were with you, just as you've received from us. You have no need that I should write to you, and so on. What do these show us? This is Paul's first aid kit for new believers. If you link all the subjects that he says he's already taught the Thessalonians, you'll see what he thought new believers should be told in the first weeks of their Christian life. A clear understanding of the gospel? Of course. The truth about the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. Preparation for persecution? They were born in persecution. The coming of the Lord? Obviously. And so it goes, a very worthwhile study. Of course they needed further instruction. So in the first epistle, Paul wrote in 413, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. Here he clarified details about the first part of Christ's coming, to the air for his saints. And he used the Greek word for the rapture, harpazo, meaning to be caught up. But in the second letter, he wrote in chapter two, verse three, let no one deceive you by any means. What was this about? The Lord was also going to come with his saints to earth. Some were telling the believers that the trouble they were passing through was actually the tribulation, and they had missed the Lord's coming for his saints. But that couldn't be, because Paul writes, God from the beginning chose you for salvation. This is not the usual word for chose. This is its only use in the New Testament. It means to take for oneself. This is speaking about the fact that the Lord will save the church out of the world before his judgment falls. Paul had already taught them this. He asks, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? But some had been telling them otherwise, as some do today. For this reason, the last section of his second epistle gives a twofold warning. First, stand fast, and hold the traditions which you have been taught. The word traditions doesn't mean old habits of the church. It refers to the truths handed over to them by the apostle. And second, a few verses later he writes, withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. Be careful who you listen to. However, adds Paul, don't count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother and stand fast. And that's our scripture snapshot of 1st and 2nd Thessalonians.